Good evening. On this episode of Tic Tac Tech, I'm going to be talking about the coolest form of transportation humans have ever come up with, the airship. It takes everything you loved and thought was cool about submarines, except instead of descending to the abysmal claustrophobic depths, you're up in the air looking down on the whole world. And I've always thought airships were really cool. I suppose to start the discussion, I need to, to tease out the differences between two different types of airships. There are rigid airships, like Zeppelins, which have a rigid superstructure inside of which is the balloon carrying the lighter-than-air gas that gives you the lift. And then there are non-rigid airships, like the blimps, the Goodyear blimp, where the shape of the envelope is maintained by the gas inside of it because it's just a balloon, an airtight balloon. Now, blimps, there, there isn't much for me to talk about with blimps. We can discard it for the purposes of this discussion. So we're mainly talking about Zeppelins. And the first generation, uh, the first airship era, Zeppelin era, came to an abrupt halt when there were a number of disasters. These things crashed, and uh, the most notable of which was the Hindenburg, which blew up in a giant apocalyptic fire, you know, cataclysmic fire, because the Nazis didn't have any helium, so they pumped it full of hydrogen. Very bad idea. Now, uh, we only fill our airships with helium, so it's totally safe, not combustible, but airships of this first generation still had a huge flaw, and that flaw is that they need a very large ground crew to maintain them, to hold them down, and they also need ballast, because you have a single envelope filled with this lighter-than-air gas, helium, and if you don't have a ballast on the ground to weigh it down and then something to tether it to, uh, it's just going to float away. So the genius innovation that has come through and is really going to make airships uh, and zeppelins really economical is the ability to compress helium. So the main company I'm talking about today that's come up with this is Aeroscraft. And what they've figured out is that if you have a rigid a rigid airship, a Zeppelin-style airship, within the primary envelope, you can have these smaller compressor tanks and, uh, you know, machines to suck the helium out of your main bubble into these compression tanks. And as you compress the helium uh, and it becomes more compressed and denser, the whole aircraft becomes denser and you can allow it to sink. This way you can control the buoyancy of the craft so instead of having to take on, you know, take on different types of ballast and needing all these ground crews, you can have something that can take off and land pretty independent of anything that's on the ground. And that's the genius of the aircraft design. And, uh, you know, you look at this thing, it's, it's huge. This is their test model, which they were using as their proof of concept. And it's only about half the size of their original planned production model, which is going to have the capacity to carry 66 tons of cargo. 66 tons! And that's right, cargo. These guys wanted to create a new type of Zeppelin for the purposes of carrying cargo uh, all around the world. And given everything I've said, there's vertical takeoff and landing, it's completely independent of guys on the ground, you don't need any infrastructure, it would make for a very compelling type of cargo craft. You could go and deliver stuff uh, all kinds of, of isolated areas, up and down mountains, all kinds of places. And it looks like the way they're designing it, you can, you know, unload your cargo without even coming down to touch the ground. That's pretty impressive. Moreover, because this is lighter than air travel, and all you need to do is power these little rotors to propel you through the air, little propellers, uh, sort of like a, like a boat, you know, it really is just like a giant cruise boat, uh, this uses about 20% the amount of fuel that a comparable fixed wing, you know, jet aircraft would use. And, uh, you know, I don't know what the comparison is, but I would imagine that it might use a comparable amount of fuel to a large uh, shipping cruiser or, or, a, or a boat. And ultimately, that's who Aeroscraft is hoping to compete with. They think that they can make a type of cargo platform here that will be more efficient and faster than ocean-going cargo vessels, which is astonishing. I mean, you read some of the articles on these guys, they're now in the process of building their 66-ton prototype, and they have plans for a 250-ton, 500-ton Zeppelin for delivering cargo. 
And, you know, the, the power that you would need to use on this is, like I said, you know, very, very low compared to a, a jet. And you just need to, to run these, these little uh, propellers. So wh why can't you put solar panels on this? Well, that's exactly what the Chinese have done. The Chinese have created their own blimp. The translated name for this blimp is The Dream. And, you know, admittedly, this isn't used for cargo. This is a much smaller blimp. It's going to be used for communications and surveillance and spying. I mean, you know, that kind of brings to mind all kinds of, like, creepy stuff they do in China when it comes to surveillance. But anyway, they put solar panels on this damn thing, and this blimp can stay up in the air for six months. That's pretty damn cool. I mean, if you could stay in the air for that long with, with solar panels, I mean, what's to stop you from getting next-generation solar panels, slapping them on there, and, and making a blimp that can stay up in the air, or excuse me, a zeppelin, not a blimp, a zeppelin, that can stay up in the air indefinitely. And if you could stay up in the air indefinitely because you have solar panels and stuff, what's to stop you from adding on some condensers because when you're up in the air you're going to be surrounded by clouds, water vapor, uh, you know, condensation, all that stuff, and you can collect all kinds of, of water from the clouds you're passing by. Imagine just someone, some giant zeppelin flying over and, and drinking a cloud that looked like it was going to drop rain on you. How pissed off would you be? But, you know, all that together, you, you have solar panels, a solar-powered zeppelin that never has to come down and land, and then you have a uh, dew collector condensers to, to take water out of the atmosphere, out of the clouds you drive by, why can't you just make like a luxury hotel, or not even a hotel, a city, a miniature city, because look at that, you got windows in this, you could have these giant bay windows to let the sun in, you could build your aquaponic systems, you could grow food on here, and, and your solar panels to keep it up in the air, like imagine sometime in the near future, say, five, eight, ten years from now, some company takes this technology, puts it all into that, and then you can get on one of these things and you could be on, on a six-month float. Or, or if you want, you could just, I mean, if you're like a billionaire or something, you could buy one of these and just live up in the air. That would be like the dream. That's what I imagine. I mean, ever since we saw Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, Cloud City, living up in the clouds, it's like, we, we could be realizing this pretty soon. This is one of the coolest things. It's, it's awesome. So I just wanted y'all to be aware of that. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Tic Tac Tech and that it was informative. West Coast.